Psalms 111 through 118. I'd like to talk about the promise of the Psalms uh, of blessing to the person who fears the Lord. Here are three verses from our reading. Psalm 112, speaking of the righteous person, wealth and riches will be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. 113, God raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap that he may seat him with princes. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. 115, 12 and 13, the Lord will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel, the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great. So we have a general promise that those who fear the Lord will be blessed. In fact, the text just so much as says so. Uh, the idea, therefore, of prosperity, sometimes called a, a prosperity theology, on the one hand is in the text. We can't deny that. On the other hand, things can get off the rails uh, if we limit this to material prosperity. And that's where, uh, again, the reputation of prosperity theology has gone sour when someone on TV, usually, we think of it this way, they start to define faith a certain way, and before you know it, they're asking for money, and things go downhill from there. But let's think about this real promise that David himself, and let's always put ourselves in the position of David, what did he mean by these passages here? Well, we have a story. Again, what story is David living through? He has an Abraham to Moses story of success. In fact, it's the greatest success possible. By the time you go from Abraham and finish with Moses, the children of Israel are ready to, are, are ready to go into the land of Canaan. Huge family. A land awaits them and so forth. And then even Joshua in chapter 1 verse 8 as he stands ready to go in he's told this the book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth that you may observe to do it for then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success the two words prosper and success very common words in hebrew 139 times between them and they just stand for the general idea of succeeding at something so the point is, when David says these things about this promise of blessing, he has a very specific story in mind, and that is the story of his family. Uh, that is an accurate story. It's a story that not only has blessing in its past, just look at what God did for us, would be one way to say it, but look at what the promise is from the person who's standing at the brink of the next generation. So whether looking forward or backward, success is written into the story of the family of Abraham. That's the background then of these verses here. We are an incredibly blessed people, would be how he would say it. Now, of course, he uses poetic hyperbole often in how he does it, but that's to be expected for personal testimony, right? That uh, David can say, we are an incredibly blessed people, those who fear the Lord. Now, all is not rainbow and butterflies, of course, because if we look, it's not hard to find as in 37, 7, uh, David also saying something like this, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in the way because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. In other words, the same person who said we're blessed also said don't get, don't get into comparison and start wondering why you don't have as much as the next person. In fact, that word for wait patiently is usually translated as uh, wait in pain or even uh, even writhe in pain, often used for a mother giving birth. So rest and writhe, probably not the best um, life verse to have, but certainly one to, to remember because it balances out in just a common sense way of thinking the promise of blessing. Well, what do we do ourselves uh, today? Well, here's where we need to be careful again, because our temptation sometimes is to think in terms of faith as though it's a mental state of confidence in an outcome. By itself, it's an interesting idea. Again, think of a sprinter preparing to run and seeing himself win. That might be an interesting psychological discussion. I don't see the word faith in the Bible ever used in that sense of being confident of an outcome. Instead, we need to see faith as less a mental state and more in the simple decision to commit to a story, 
to join a story already in progress. That story does have a guarantee attached to it. Those who join this story will always, in the end, say, Great was thy faithfulness. Thank you.